Like, did we decide on a base camp somewhere to we, where we could work for, work out of out here, or did we just? I think we just kind of. The plan, as I understand started. it, is Red's going to use this climbing harness to affix this to the side of the mountain, and then climb mm -hmm. back. Like, I guess, just pack it into the snowpack somehow. I'm gonna I'm gonna hammer a pit into the mountain, and I'm gonna use like four or five pieces of rope and basically tie a little basket for it. Okay, yeah, that'll work. And then, and then he's going to climb back down, and somebody at the ground is going to fire an arrow at it. That's my understanding of what's going to happen. Razu doesn't need to be part of any of this, as far as I'm asking. Well, as far as I understand, which is why I'm asking you first. Okay, um, I guess Razu would be... Uh, I guess she'd be back away from the, uh, from the cave, I guess preparing to maybe set up a camp or something. Minimum okay. safe distance as by is put forth by DOSHA regulation. By DOSHA regulation. <laughs> <Yep>. Yes. <laughs> if you're at the cave, at the mouth of the cave you're using, you're in danger of being right where the avalanche is coming down, because that was oh, the yeah, whole no, plan I'm... was to use. Yeah, the... I'm not going to be near the cave. I'm not okay. going to be anywhere near the cave. So where are you? The idea is to bring this avalanche down on this burnt out long haul and the openings in the mountain underneath. The nearest safe space, if you're not needed, would be back out on the flat path where Adrian yeah, crashed yeah. earlier. Yeah, I'll set, up, I'll set up over there then. Okay. Is anybody going with Razu to do that? In other well, words, who's firing the arrow? I mean, I think Wendy's the best shot, and I can give her advantage. Yeah. And I can then... fire the arrow from the air so that I don't just get avalanched on. Yeah. Okay, then Adrix would go with um, Razu okay. on the path. Since we're splitting the party, and let's... Birdie is only splitting the party a little bit. Birdie's yeah. no longer then, needed after he climbs up and puts this climbing harness up there. So where is, is Birdie also going to be out on the path? Right, yeah, Birdie is not going to be anywhere near the avalanche. Okay. Birdie's like, this is their plan. They can have fun with it. <laughs> and right. Red, your, your plan is to go up using this climbing harness. And yep. while you're up there, put together this little basket on the side. Uh -huh. of... Okay. Uh, Red, let's get... A strength athletics check at advantage because you've got climbing spikes and a harness up here. Because you're going to have to spend a little bit of time. Yeah. Just to fix it. It's a 19 on athletics. Okay. So, yeah, you have no problem just physically staying up there. Basket weaving was a non weapon proficiency in second edition. Unfortunately, there's no <laughs> basket weaving skill. And you know why there's oh, no you basket just use weaving rope. skill? The basket weaving skill. Is not in this edition because everybody said it was always useless and nobody took it. Well, look where we are now. I mean, you could say it's a tool proficiency, basket weaving. Uh, so you just make a little harness to set this thing in. Yep. Very gingerly. Okay, let's get a dexterity sleight of hand check to see if you can do this without rupturing the device prematurely. Tool proficiency, Eldov. So 17. 17. You very gingerly set this thing in the basket, and you wait there for a second with your hands just kind of cupped a couple inches away from the basket, just to catch it, in case it falls, Please. just long enough so you can be pretty confident that the thing's not going to move, it's not swaying back and forth too much in the wind. It looks like this just weird, without you touching it, with no rippling on the surface, it just looks like this kind of strange orange egg just a little bit heavier at the bottom than the top because that's where the most of the weight of the liquid is sitting and then you're getting back down the mountain and going back out to the path yes uh is there cover on the top like somewhere that won't be part of this collapse no 100 percent okay. not <laughs> it's going to be an avalanche listen buddy i got this shot don't worry about okay it. so I'll, yeah i'll slide down i mean if, if she misses she can just shoot it again yeah i'll yeah. slide down the rope uh pull out the pit and Okay. And make a uh, cutting action dash to get 90 feet back towards the path. Okay. And, Wendy, you're going to fire... How far away are you firing this arrow from? Uh, I figure I'll fire it in the air from about 60 feet away. Okay. At that range, you're pretty far away from it, and you're way up in the air outside of where the snow All and right. the rocks are going to fall. So, yeah, I, I want to be close enough that I feel comfortable at it. Mm -hmm. How how close do I need to be in the air to feel like I have a good shot? Oh, no. You're comfortable with your shot at 60 feet, because that's the range of your wind sentence, and you're in open air. Okay. What I'm saying is, at that range, being that close, I'm going to give there some chance of blowback from this avalanche knocking you out of the air. That's fine. Okay. 
I'll be prepared to step of the wind and fly as far as I freaking can from this place. All right, so you guys at the path. Uh, Windy, make me a dexterity saving throw at advantage. If you were 60 feet away on the ground, you would just be dead. But you're way up right. in here. That's a 22. 22. You guys down at the path. Red comes back. And he's walking pretty briskly. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys wait for a moment. And then you hear the blast in the distance. And it's immediately followed by a loud rumbling sound that gets louder and louder and louder and when you think your ears can't be filled with any more of this sound it continues to grow climb on top of one of the boulders <laughs> you get on one of the boulders yeah windy yeah you fire this arrow and you just instinctively know that your aim is true. You don't wait for the blast to turn and start flying back away from it. So you hear the blast behind you as you're flying back. Are you going back to where your companions are? Yeah, because I'm thinking, oh shit, I might have to pick up Birdie. <laughs> After a second or two in the air, you realize you are completely blind. The mass amount of debris and rubble and snow and ice and rock that are flying down this mountain, kicking up dust and snow and powder in all directions is just scrambling your radar you know which way is down but that's about it yeah so i i think if i'm completely blind i'll just fly up and get as far out of this as i can see so you're just gonna circle until things subside yeah okay the incredible bulk of the mass of this ice sheet and the snowpack on top of it fall down into the void left by the burned out long haul and the tunnels underneath where you guys are there's very little danger of being overrun with the the snow coming down because like i said there's a grade here but it's not exceptionally steep where you are is in no danger of breaking apart and falling that's why it's flat enough here for him to build his hall but it takes a good several minutes before the rumbling and crashing sounds subside. And you can all feel it still in your feet, in the ground, the movement and the motion of it. And it's going to be a little while before everything's completely calm and still. But the most immediate effect is that the huge plume of smoke is almost entirely gone. Now there's just kind of a faint haze coming up from the ground. Well, that's good. Amix turns to Razu and says, I have a feeling the Ice King might know that we're here now. <laughs> Razu grins. And Wendy, after a couple minutes of circling, you regain your composure and you find your companions safe on the ground. Hopefully by the time he's able to scramble forces to get to us, we'll be long gone. I right. bet my head looks good up a pike. <laughs> and what's next? Guys, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make our way back to Rust. Okay, so, I don't like, know what's happened. Birdie looks at Wendy and says, You know, if you had let them give me the recipe for that black powder, we could have done this all the time. Yeah, but then you'd be running towards the explosions rather than away. <laughs> I'd be far more frightened. Do we want to be doing this all the time? Yes. Uh, Razu hit her hand like in, in, instinctively, like without her, without her, like her knowledge, but like, like her, like you know that nervous tick that people get sometimes. The nervous tick Razu's, where they just grab their whip and beat Birdie with it. Basically, that's yeah. kind of the, what Razu has developed right now. I have that all the time. It's weird. Weird how that yeah. works. If you guys leave now, you'll be up. It'll be close to midnight by the time you get back up to Rust. That's good. Seems fine. We rest on the sledge. The weather stays relatively calm. When you get back to the sledge, Rust is uh leaned against it, dozing off. White's nowhere to be seen. Well, I saw that coming. Yeah, I saw that coming too. He he wakes up. 
seems shocked to see you all. He stands up. And he says, he points from this distance. You can see the peaks behind where the long hall stood. Well, where there used to be peaks. And now it's just a flat, uh, rocky ledge above it. And he points, he said, it came tumbling down upon the hall. This, I was going to wait until morning and then leave, thinking you all dead. You should know. No. That was us. He, he asked what, what in hell's happened. So interesting story. <laughs> interesting and story. I'll, pigs develop. I'll just go through the mechanical purposes of how the Remoras' insides work. <laughs> Do you inform this that the frost giant you suspect is Siakchar is dead? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we needed to. We were going to ask him if he could actually identify that frost giant. <clears throat> Um, he's His never seen Siakchar. Okay. Well, all, all he knows a for... frost giant dead, and his fo- his long haul was on fire. I feel like that tells a story. Yeah. Actually, his long haul was burnt out. It was the Remsorma, the the Remora caverns underneath that were on fire. And I mean, actually, neither of them are on fire anymore. They're under about sixty feet of snow. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds yeah. of thousands of tons of snow. Yeah, that was us. He asks if you all... I mean, he he would have no difficulty tracking down White if he wanted to. But yeah, he, White let off in the middle of the night as soon as he was able. And he hasn't seen him, seen him since. Did he take He's probably anything? dead. It's not worth the energy. Is he, did, as long as he didn't take anything, I don't care. He didn't, because you instructed him if he tried to take anything, Russ was, Russ was to shoot him. Right. Yeah, yeah. honestly... If he thinks that that's the best choice for him. I mean, here's the thing. When we go to the next area, we're not going to have someone to fetch him after he runs away from the sledge again, so. You have to let people make their own mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Even if they're deadly. I tried. I tried. You did you try, tried, Adrix. Either. Did our best. So, obviously, Lady Olaine will be extraordinarily happy to hear that Siakchar is dead by whatever means. And Rust offers to take you to the borders of the lands of Vornacht Keep. So you guys can get on with your quest. Nice. Okay. When we rest when we rest and build the campfire, Raza will take some, some measure of the stuff that you pull from the Ramaraz Ramaraz and uh, use it in her prayers to Osprin. Yeah, go You're ahead. in the tunnel, by the way. Am I? I'm sorry. You were. Uh, go ahead and take the benefits of the long rest. I'm assuming you're not leaving out of this camp at least until uh, daylight at the earliest. Yeah. Pretty much all of the arrows we fired at that thing are soot, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, you can recover half of the ones that you just used to kill that Remoraz. Oh, really? Okay. The first one you were firing at, if you hit the Remoraz, the arrow would have burned, and if you missed, they would have landed in the burning long haul. So. Okay. See, unless I specify otherwise, just go ahead and follow the rule that says you can get half your ammo back after every encounter. You got it. The journey to Vornok Keep is much like the journey here. He doesn't take you a straight shot. He likes to travel through canyons. He likes to avoid wooded areas. Uh, He likes to try to keep the sun to his left whenever he can. Here's the interesting thing about this journey is... You keep crisscrossing this long gouge, this kind of straight line that you recognized in the stone of the ground uh, going down into the valley. You're crisscrossing it, it looks like because Rust continually doubles back in this crisscrossy pattern. So you cross it one way and then the other way a few hours later. And sometimes you lose track of it, because sometimes you do go through places where there's earth and soil, and the gouge is no longer visible. Sometimes you travel through places where the snow has fallen much thicker and has now covered any sense of it. But anytime you stop, it's never far away. And Rust gets the foreboding sense, he says, after a good three or four days of travel in this manner, that you can probably follow that gouge all the way to Vornacht Keep. It has been your steadfast companion this whole journey 
Where would the other end of it be, do you think? He says he'd have to travel back to its origin to be certain, but if he had to guess, he would say at the site of the battle where the giant was killed in that area. Yeah. So this gouge was... Oh... Oh, oh, I just had a I just had a really bad thought. Really big thing dragging an axe? Yes. Probably fine. And the look on Russ's face <laughs> indicates that he has this he has had the same thought. Yeah. For an axe to so... make that kind of mark for that long, that consistently, for one thing it would have to be extraordinarily heavy far heavier right. than any of you could possibly lift we're talking an axe probably the size of your sledge and the sort of like axe that something... doesn't doesn't go dull exactly yes. the sort of exactly. metal that would never dull yeah i'm not feeling good about this so if that means if that means what i think it means then perhaps this perhaps the the giant's former mate is not just merely undead, but some sort of intelligent undead. Uh, or takes orders. Yeah. And the question of that, Rust is going to have to leave as a mystery. Because as you come up on what he's saying is the borders of Voronok land, even though you can't see sight of the keep or even the edge of the ravine from here, he says this is where he takes his leave. He was going to give you instructions on how to reach the keep, by giving you landmarks, uh, you know, follow this, uh, follow this bearing until you find this frozen lake and then the border. But there's no need for such a thing because you can just follow this gouge in the ground. Follow this trail. <sighs> That's convenient. Yeah. He double checks to make sure that you still have all of the potions and the ring that were given to you by Lady Elaine. Yep. Yep. The the ring that we're totally one hundred percent definitely going to return. He also makes sure that you understand that this is a loan, and then once you're, if you survive Volrenar Keep, the lady will expect you to come back and return it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Then he tells you to be on the watch for the guard dogs. Good luck with the lightning, and Godspeed to all of you. And he takes his leave. What's next? Hmm. I, guess I think we need to just path. yeah let's try to get as close as we can to get eyes on it stealthily yeah. and finalize up our plans make sure nothing's changed because let's be honest his info was out a little bit out of date about the keep oh he yeah. was also lying about jumping across I don't know if you put on to that what? I figured let him because you Wait, know, we were what? lying about Birdie why didn't we just ask him what? What, you didn't- you weren't aware of that? No, Red. We were not aware of that. He's not a very good liar! <laughs> Red, we've had Red, this discussion I, before. Red, I don't know if you know this about me, but I believe everything everyone tells me until uh, proven otherwise. Red stops and thinks for a moment. Adrix's no, insight check. Right, Adrix's <laughs> insight check is, "Hey, Red, is this guy lying to me?" <laughs> Pretty much. Because <laughs> Adrix believed that he was going to be able to fly one day, and then he did. So I'm not confident <laughs> enough in my own insight to disbelieve him. <laughs> Red, Red fishes a copper out of his pouch. Hands to Adrix. Adrix, if you hold this for one hour, it will become a platinum. That's really? a deception of uh, fifteen. Really? How? I hand him the, co the coin. You continue to march for one hour and two things happen. <laughs> the first thing that happens is in the distance you catch sight of a series of hills that the gouge seems to be heading exactly towards. The second thing that happens is, Adrix, you've been holding this copper piece in your hand the whole time, <laughs> watching it very intently, and yeah. it has not transmogrified into a platinum piece. Actually, 
what happens is, sleight of hand roll, uh... Yeah, I was actually going to do that myself. <laughs> 23. Wait, is Wendy Patrick, doing this? W yeah, Wendy bumps into you for a second, about 45 <laughs> minutes in. At the end of the one hour, you look at your hand, you're holding a platinum piece. Well, there you go. As long as Adrix doesn't have a passive perception of higher than 23, that happens. <laughs> Red, you have to teach me how you did this. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, it only works once. So also, when Adrix eats glowing mushrooms, they restore his batteries. Yes. <laughs> Trouble, I think you're gonna have to just clip out that five minutes for a special video, because that was something magical. <laughs> I just don't even understand what that was about. That was that was that was an interlude, is what well, that I guess, was. I guess Adrix does believe anything you tell him, huh? <laughs> the gouge you're following, and it does get much snowier here. And over the course of the next hour, as you're approaching these hills in the distance, you notice uh, an icy mist rolling in, about ankle high on you guys. And when you climb up into these hills and get to the top, you can catch sight of the ravine. And the gouge makes a turn, heading along the edge of this ravine. You realize you can't see the other... Or you, I'm sorry, you can see the other edge of the ravine, far off in the distance. It's not a long, thin crack in the ground. It's huge and circular. And the other far side, where you can see rocks on the other side of the roiling mist at one point during antiquity might have been the other bank of a lake and then rising up on an island in the distance you do come to pass to see Vornok to keep so I've got my little got this little thing here big black square let's see if it works first things first I can actually yeah. give you a nice big one yeah. It's actually looking appetizing a little bit. Like, I would eat this. Would you? No. <laughs> it does look a little bit like really a mento. Oh, it's dough. still only making... Okay, yeah, I gotta... It's fine, I can go into... Uh, where do I have to go into here? It's right-click revealer, uh, yeah, reveal range. Reveal range. I would still only make it bigger on the big one, though, just so that you don't get confoozled. Confoozled? Yeah. Uh, the problem is, on this side of the table, my actual reveal range was off the screen. I couldn't do, make it any bigger. There we go. Alright, that's probably big enough for this one. Nice. How's this working? Looks beautiful. Okay, so you does. guys are coming from this direction. So I'm going to give you guys everything from the front wall of the keep here. And then off in the great distance, you can see... You can also give you the whole walls, I guess. You can see all the walls coming around. This number 12. is so nice. <laughs> like, real? How did we not know? How long was this in the game and I didn't know it? Also, not uh, long. heads up, um, I just tried Please. to drag my boy in there. My, yeah. my little doodly dude. And it is vanishing. Uh, we can fix that. Just pull it back out. I'll fix that for you. Okay, it's toggle. Know. Ignore fog of war. Okay. Where'd you put your boy? I got it on this spoon. So. Okay. I'm fixing it for all of us. Yeah, we're all fixed. Well, there's going to be multiple okay. maps here, so... You might just have to do it Oops. once for each map. So, coming from the north, and these are five-foot squares. So I'm going to... So we all need to go... Get all... Some of you already shrunk okay. yourself down, it looks like. Yeah, there you go. You so you can five. see at the narrowest point here, this is a 5, 10, 15... About a 20-foot jump at the very narrowest point. Most places it's between 25 and 30. It's about a decent leg for a drawbridge if this were the moat to a keep. It's not. The roiling mists in all directions. Right now, none of you are close enough to actually look down into the ravine. The curtain walls of the keep are black. Like, obsidian black. And... You can see battlements up on top of... I think you can see battlements on top of the towers. Let me make sure. You can indeed see battlements up on top of the towers. And the connecting passages that connect the towers. Out here you can see three freestanding towers. That 
just seem to be rising up out of the mist themselves as though there is no bottom and it is uncomfortably supernaturally cold right now so, incredibly silent very very still uh jog my memory he, he said that the lightning only comes from these towers or does it come from all the towers all towers he said that there are three towers that do not seem to be connected to the curtain wall but there are four towers that can cover the far side of the bank here these four are all pretty close to the edge of the ravine so the two so outlying towers and these two in the curtain wall i think we uh i think we misunderstood this when we drew our map earlier i don't see any way for windy to get into that tower on the left right now I thought there was ground under it there may be way 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 down below you somewhere well what we could do Birdie, why are you over there? Oh. <laughs> if we wait till night, mm -hmm. we could uh, have you guys kind of climb down the cliff, and then I could try to string a rope maybe about 20 feet down this. The problem is that we would then have to climb the tower, and I don't see that happening. Yeah. The towers... Difficult to say because you're really far away and you're not sure what the internal structure is like. But it looks like it goes up maybe somewhere between three and six stories, depending on how tall they are. You count uh, three rows of arrow loops in the side of the tower. One of which is kind of at the level you're at now, and then two higher than that. And that's on each of these towers. They're identical in that respect. Do the rest of you think that that looks climbable? No, I didn't expect it to be Black Obsidian. Then. Or any type of, any color of Obsidian, actually. So I think we still... Hmm. And then Red, something catches your eye coming movement coming around the side of this tower mm -hmm. as Wendy is forming her thought so that there might be someone on one of the far towers at the top or no, inside the, the arrow slits on the ground outside of the curtain wall oh okay take cover hey break they said that the audio is and the audio in the stream is uh lagging I can't fix that it's okay. twitch twitch is having an issue Right. If it was on my end, I could fix it, but I'm having no stuff in here, so I guess catch the VOD later. <laughs> catch it on YouTube hopefully this week. The hopefully the recording is fine. Yeah, it probably is. Uh, I can so give Treble the... I can give Treble the recording. The, yeah. the raw recording. So, I think we should... Uh, like, one thing I want to try is, like, we don't know if the triggers for the lightning are automatic or if they are manned right. right right so they they trigger on birds so that means that that leads me to believe that it's automatic if if what he said was true so maybe we can shoot arrows to try and kind of see how long it takes the lightning to recharge does it does it automatic like is there a is there a interval that we well, we should, show? if we shoot arrows quickly, let's. I I think we should keep that in mind for a bit. But let's talk first, just because the second we start shooting arrows at an interval, and if it, your plan does work, they immediately know someone's here shooting arrows. Yeah, we yeah. lost our element of surprise. I mean, um, we're gonna lose the element of surprise if they start shooting lightning at us. So, and about this right, time, right. Red, so, which is why I think that mm -hmm. coming up around this corner on the ground, around the side of the curtain wall, you see the two guard dog creatures or two of them that rust had described they are the size of very large dogs mm -hmm. and they have this insectoid look to them they don't seem to notice oh, uh, you standing this far back away from the ravine yeah i'll grab my companions and pull them down into the snow uh-huh and you guys watch the dogs over the course of the next minute or so as they come around the front here 
moving very slowly, kind of lazily. They're not in any kind of hurry. And they come back around this tower and disappear from view. If you spiked a hair into the ground with a pitten, like the body of one, and its tongue wrapped around the pitten, do you think it would pull itself into the chasm? <laughs> I mean, maybe. If it could pull things larger than itself. Could... Is that I, how physics works? Can I track... Can I... Could I trap a hare with a like a bear trap or something to kind of catch the things? Yeah, the tongue? difficulty would be to find the hare, find a hare around here. You haven't seen any wildlife since you entered what Rust called Vornok lands. All right. Well, one test I'd like to know is whether or not it'll detect things that are are flying below the level of the. A cliff. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to test this by shooting arrows, I think the first one we should shoot should be, I'll run down this cliff, shoot an arrow over here, and then run back up. And if they shoot lightning at it, uh, then we know, okay, they sh can both see things that are flying that small and also see uh, whatchamacallit, and also see below the cliff. But if they don't, then maybe what we do is, I'll go over to this tower instead of the one that we thought over to the left. So and try to find a way up for us. Problem with that. What if they shoot lightning at you instead of the arrow? Well, I'll be on the cliff. If they shoot lightning at me, that means they can shoot anything on the cliff and we're, we're completely boned. That's why I'm doing this at night. No matter what, we're going to need to get close to it at some point. And if they can shoot lightning that soon, I mean, that's something we should know. And if, we're, if they're going to shoot at any of us, it should probably be me. We should probably tie a rope to you in case you, I don't know... In, to, in case I, yeah, in no, case that makes sense. In case lightning makes your muscles seize up and you fall. Is that what lightning does? I think it can do that. I've never gotten hit, and I've flown in lightning before. <laughs> that seems like a very bad idea. When he's like, "Wait a minute, I think birds are immune to lightning. I'm fine." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. given what we can see here, I no. have two main thoughts. Yeah, I mean, plan. A, I don't see a good way to get across aside from potentially a bridge. And B, without a ram, I don't even know what good it'll do us getting over there. I think if you get to the top of one of these towers and looking at how smooth they are, that's not just climbing. Um, you're just in the range of all the other towers further back in the keep at that point out in the open. Well, that's why I think this tower is our good entrance point because if you're mm -hmm. on the wall of this tower right here yeah it's the most isolated. i don't think you can be seen by any other tower yeah so if we're gonna have to climb one of these towers i think that's our spot i like it i agree okay all right so we'll wait till cover of night i'll black my feathers how are you doing this? Some soot from a campfire from the day before. I did it when we had attacked the one before, yeah. so just would have thought to keep some. It's a little gross, is all I'm saying. Oh, it sucks for sure. <laughs> can uh, Birdie? Can you make sure that there's a safe place for the sledge where they, there's no tracks for anything, anything patrolling on this side of the ravine? Is there any obvious tracks from anything? Yeah, there's a very obvious track actually coming Other through than, the middle of the road here. This large gouge that you've been following, and it kind of I'm stops talking about at like, the front of the ravine. I'm talking about like fresh, uh, fresh footprints and the like. Uh, make a survival check because it's been snowing for the past day or so. Oh, okay. I know. That is a million. Twenty-seven. 27. They could either be footprints or they could just be like natural divots in the stone ground. But you do find very large footprints that might belong to perhaps a, a frost giant stomping around. However, you have not seen evidence of any such giant. Okay. Uh, so the does the divot in the ground just go all the way up to the edge of the cliff here? Uh, it stops about 15, 20 feet away from it. Hmm. 
looks like they might have some method of going down, letting out a bridge, which, I mean, if that's true, then that would be something we could bring our sledge across once we took command of the entrance of the keep. Yeah. Who do we think actually runs this place now? With the lich sealed. The Ghost. only the only clue you were given mm -hmm. was that Rust and Lady Elaine had known monsters created from this place and described some to you. Some right. fit the description of that, like the guard dogs you saw. Others you didn't fit any description you're aware of, but some you pegged as the Hydroloths you fought at the bottom of the right. ladder. Hmm. So, is there any uh, any place that's kind of off to the side, that, like it's not like like a divot or down, like a gully or something that we can put the uh, where the elk specifically and the sledge are not going to be visible? Not really, because it's just wasteland for uh, probably everywhere around the radius mm -hmm. of this lake. You don't see any trees on the far side. There's no large rocks jutting out. It doesn't look like there's anywhere particularly to hide them. It also doesn't look like there's anything around that's going to cause them much issue, though. Okay, well, I'll just stake them down and fill, fill their feed bags for while we're doing this. Okay. Alright, and then let's uh, let's try the first plan. Let's just shoot an arrow narrowly missing the tower from about 15 feet down this cliff. With a rope tied around. With a rope tied around me. And you're yeah, waiting for the cover of darkness to do this? Yeah. Windy, roll me percentile dice. Alright. Tens on the... Oh. Give me one second. Right click. Toggles. Ignore fog of war. Tens on the left. 18. 18. So, the plan as I understand it is you're going to run down the edge of the cliff some distance. Uh -huh. While you're running, you're going to fire an arrow up into the air. Fire an arrow over over this direction, not upwards. Like, Where is over this here. arrow going to arc to? Tab me. This one. Uh, sorry. One so second. I, I drew a line. So you're going to fire it back beyond the tower. You're right. Over the tower or to the side of it? To the side of it. Okay. And then I'm going to run back up. All right, Wendy, roll initiative. All right. Uh, as part of this plan, Red is going to sneak his way in the snow, crawling to where I have him on the map, and hammering a pitten for Wendy's harness. So she's going to be tethered that far back? Yeah. Gotcha. Got 100 feet of rope, right? Wendy, what did that initiative look like? 20. 20. I think I've got you beat. I got nice. a 21. Nice. Uh, so, I'm surprised, but I get my reaction back, and then you fire an arrow up over this thing, and then... I have to do calculations in my end. I have to calculate movement and stuff across maps. <laughs> All right. And you do and see, indeed, the sky splits in half as lightning arcs from the top of this tower. Which tower was this? This is this tower here. From which tower? This one, the one you... Okay, yeah. And it arcs up into the sky as though it were chasing after your arrow. Windy, what's next? Alright. Um, the plan after that, guys, was to just jump over there and see if I, it looked climbable. Well, I thought we were that... just figuring out if it was going after arrows first. Then in that case, um, I'm going to shoot one down afterwards. Down. I want to see if it'll chase the stuff going like Downwards. So what are you doing with this turn? Um, Fire, staying perched on the side of the cliff and firing downwards? No, I'm going to fire downwards, like, over 
like down to the towards the base of the tower and then i'm going to run back up to my party and how much movement do you have i have um 50 feet and if i need to i can step of the wind to get to 100 feet oh well how far down in the ravine did you go these are five foot steps i just went like 15 feet down okay so you need about 35 feet of movement to get back to red so i can get back to red no problem no problem windy I have, oh, wrong, there we go. I have a 25 to hit. Okay, yeah, that hits. Or we have the rope. Roll a d4. Well, you're back up on solid ground by this point. Okay. Because this is after you took your movement. You're standing next to red. All right, uh, sorry. Right click, toggle, ignore, d4. 13 points of lightning damage. That's a one. A one, and you are stunned for three rounds. So, Red, you see Wendy disappear down in the cliff, running down the mm -hmm. side of cliffs like she's able to do. Probably not able to see her arrow in the air, being too small of a target, being this dark, being that far away, but you definitely see the peel of lightning arc up into the air afterwards. A few moments later, you see Wendy hop up the side of the cliff and start running towards you. Another peel of lightning comes crying off the top of the tower, illuminating her brilliantly from behind like an awesome action movie and it shocks her and she falls to your feet and she is indeed seized up twitching unable to move uh pull out the pit and grab windy and drag her with everything i've got okay and after a few more moments another peal of thunder rings off in your direction but it crashes into the ground kicking up a huge amount of s stone and snow Unable to reach that far. Where did that one hit? Uh, probably off the map somewhere. Probably okay. another 10 or 15 feet this way. Let me... Okay. So they can rapid fire the, the lightning. All right. Also, doesn't need to be the air. I, I can speak haltingly, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're only stunned for about 20 seconds. It's only three rounds. Yeah. How far do you fall seconds. in 20 seconds? Well, if that hits you while you're in midair, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he'll he'll hit the bottom of the room. Adrix leans into Birdie and says, I want the rune that does that. <laughs> so how long of a uh, wait time was that between lightning fires? Virtually, like a... in virtually instantaneously. This thing can fire off lightning about as quickly as Birdie can fire arrows. Okay. Okay, so do you think... No, seriously, Birdie, I want the rune that does that. That's your job now, is to get me that rune. You can do it yourself. So do you think we <laughs> I believe in you. Create the bridge? As your teacher. <laughs> um, maybe the covered bridge? Still don't like the idea of getting over there and not having any way to get in through those doors. You do have a way through the doors. Lady Elaine gave yeah. you one. Oh, yeah, right, the, the ring will melt it. Yeah, the idea is these are heavy metal doors in this gate that they let freeze over with ice. So if you use heat metal on the door beyond, it'll freeze all the ice and the door will come open. All right, Bertie, how long is that going to take? You're the expert on these things. I, I don't know. It should be pretty friggin' quick. If it's okay. magic, magic heat, ice isn't going to stand up to it for very long. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Hold up one second. I have a cunning plan. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Oh, great. We're, we're changing the plan now? No, we're <laughs> not changing the plan. That's the best part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so these pla these doors are made out of ice? They're made They're out metal of metal with ice have, over. Yeah, they have a thick ice sheet over either side of them. Okay. We're use heat metal to melt the ice. I'm just saying if we need to use ice to make the bridge. Oh, yeah. I see some ice. Uh, how tall are these doors? Since this sounds like you're going to need actual dimensions. I don't. I don't get what we're doing. Yeah, I'm not following. I'm slow. If we're going to speed, like if the plan is open up these doors by heating the metal, mm -hmm. and we're going to use ice to make a bridge to get to the doors, why don't we just use the ice on the doors to speed it up? Uh. 
is there Why don't you fabricate the ice up from the door on into the bridge and save your, us the trouble of melting it? Is there ice on the back? Right, but I mean, there's going to be ice on both sides. Right. Yeah, the ice in the back you wouldn't be able to see, right? Right. Right. So we'll still have to melt it. I doubt there's enough icy material on the front of this door to make an entire bridge, but you could absolutely use that ice as part of your bridge. I don't see any reason. I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah, that that, that, that should be instantaneous because fabricate happens instantaneously. Is there, uh, what's on the, is there like just, is there enough ice just on the the surface of the castle? You don't see any ice on the surface of the castle, but there's a decent amount of snowpack all around the wall. Pressed up to the edge, as though the walls themselves are sub-zero. Very, very cold. But I, I will say, that thing shot real fast and determined where I was real fast. If we're going to do this, as soon as we make the bridge, we got to be ready to move. Yeah. So... So I think a different person should have the ring. So somebody can... Razu has the ring currently. Yeah, I have the ring. Okay. Can you run... Do you have to be up next to the door? Uh, what does the heat metal spell say? I don't know. Can we get the, uh, example out real quick? I think it's got a range of 60 feet. Okay, so you're fine. So, in fact, we could actually do it from over here. You could. <coughs> if that range is accurate. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm looking it up now. So, it sounds like we... Range 60 feet, start... yes. We start heating up that, uh, door. Then when it looks like it's gonna give... Build up the bridge, and run across. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Do we want a wider bridge or a covered bridge? Well, we've got eight I, squares to work with. So covered we need, bridge. We need covered four bridge. to get across. I'm gonna say if the bridge is five feet wide, yeah. If you're running across it, it's going to require a dexterity check to keep your footing. It's going to be a slippery, fairly narrow bridge. I don't feel confident about that check. Yeah, I say we make, no, a yeah. Wider make a wider bridge. We don't want to. We can't okay. make a bridge with like handrails. So you also, can do eight, you can do eight five by five squares. Is my understanding with this spell? Right. Yep. Also, Adrix, uh, I recommend that you just jump it because it's not going to hurt anything, right? And that way, you don't have to run across ice. I mean, then the towers might hit me. The towers are going to hit us regardless. The towers are already. Once you're in the air, even if the tower hits you, you keep going. <laughs> yeah, inertia. Because <laughs> it that that's kind of what we got from our our test is the towers can hit you on the ground. They shot me. Yeah, the range is off the edge of the map. So basically, just jump like jump over the bridge like. Yeah, All jump right. over where the bridge is. Just but jump. This Adrix looks really concerned. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm thinking. I'm, so Adrix, if I you jump like from this where things, one, to be perfectly two, honest, one, two, three, you'll land here because you have a strength of twenty. Okay. You, you can jump this gap. That way, you don't need to make dex checks. We avoid all that nightmare. So that's not the nightmare I'm concerned about. Here's the plan, as I understand it. Yep. Is what are we are we going to do this right away or are we gonna wait some length of time before we do it? I don't see any reason to wait. Okay, so we're gonna do I don't see any reason not to go during the day, because then Adrix can see and it's not like they couldn't see you in the dark. They only saw me in the dark after a while though. They didn't see me in the dark when I was sneaking my no, way they down. They saw you at, they saw you immediately after you fired the arrow, because they fired one right. bolt in the air, then the next bolt was right on you. I mean right. Birdie's not great in the sunlight, but he's better than Adrix in the darkness. But they saw me after I fired the arrow, not beforehand. Well, I guess it depends on whether or not sight helps them, because they can shoot us from farther than 60 feet. So what we're going to do is, uh, well, let's make the decision now, daylight or nighttime. My vote's for during the day. I'm okay either way. Daytime's fine. Adrix? Eh. Daytime, why not? Okay, so we're going to do this during the day. Here's how we're going to do this when we start up next week, is we're going to roll the initiative. You guys, the plan is to, Birdie's going to heat the metal on the door. to cause yep, the no, door to Ross come is going to heat Razu. the metal. Razu's going to do it. That's a Razu job. Yeah. Uh, Birdie's going to fabricate. 
on Birdie's turn, he's going to fabricate the bridge. Everybody's going to run across the bridge. Adrix is going to jump. Ideally, this means by the end of the first turn, you guys should all be safely on this side of the ravine. Is that the intent? Yes. That's yeah. the intent. All right, we'll see if that happens. I'm going to go ahead and put a straw poll up. Hopefully. I will have another character ready <laughs> for next week. I mean, we're so close to the end of the campaign. I feel like if you die, you're just done. You've got wings. <laughs> I think you've got the least, <laughs> second least problem to fall in. <laughs> I'm stunned if the thing hits me. <laughs> Which is why you jump over the bridge. That's why we're or... hoping it's an infinitely long chasm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so... I think if you get stunned for one round over the ravine and you're able to fly, I will give you <laughs> even odds on being able to right yourself before you hit the bottom of the ravine. I think any if you're stunned for any longer than that, I don't think there's any hope. There's a bottom. What do you know? <laughs> there's definitely a bottom, yes. I mean, worst case scenario, we go down there, we get your dead body, and I bring you back to life. As a zombie. No, I have the raised heads. Hopefully you guys can see the straw poll that I'm posting in the chat now. Um, oh, we need the material components for it as well. Wendy's making a jerk-off motion at Birdie saying that he's going to bring him back from the dead. Is she doing it right? <laughs> I trust that. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go dark for a second and add up all of the experience from the one monster you killed. And when I come back, we'll give Hey, half some... the party killed the second monster. I'm it's not true. giving any... <laughs> experience for that bear are you kidding me that's dumb no experience no. for the bear oh, I, I was hoping to like get like five experience just for birdie since he one shot him we killed two remoraz one was just ill <laughs> you fought one remoraz though the other one was just going to explode the first turn that was more of a trap than a monster <laughs> so i'm gonna go add up all the experience from the one monster you killed except now i'm cutting it in half because you all just argued with me you guys figure out where <laughs> i didn't argue though. with you i'll be back in a few minutes also, it's more of a sassing. That's an argument. <laughs> okay, I, I think... Who came up with the fabricate the bridge idea? Was that Birdie? Yeah. I think that was so I think I think that's a creative right there. Yeah. Good with that? Yep. I mean... I'll take it. But I think, like, all the, the shenanigans you guys were talking about, like, okay, because I just was like, yeah, then let's use, let's use resources. And you were like, no... Let's jump across. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. It's fine. What's the next one? Who's, uh, uh, party goals. For the party's goals today. I would have uh, to say Adrex for sticking his neck out for white. Is that actually a party goal? Is that a party goal? I don't know if that's a party goal. <laughs> so I mean, more Adrix. Well, I mean, I, I, f I feel that that was a, like a, like, nobody felt good about them just killing and butchering that guy. I, I'm going to say give I've... it to Razu for arguing to, like, well, I don't know. Whoever argued the most about, like, getting rid of the Rimuras because Birdie was just yeah. like, nah, not my centipede, not my problem. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, that was Razu. Razu. That was Razu then. And then, that, so, that's more in line with the goals of the party, despite what who's Birdie a badass? says. Uh, Wendy. Cool, cool birds don't look at explosions. <laughs> <laughs> she can't look she at anything. A choice. She can't look at anything. What the hell? That's why I have to create explosions. I guess she everywhere. does <laughs> have sunglasses, though, right? Uh, no. No, uh, Kelris had sunglasses. Oh, um, right. Who, who's intangible today? <laughs> uh, red for. Oh, what did. Hold on, I had something, I lost it. All right. Who wants to make their cases first this week? Nobody uh, here. Nobody will. Adrix, go. All right. Uh, flaws. That sounds like a great idea for flying completely blindly into the darkness at uh, Wendy's suggestion. Yeah, I liked that. All right. Figured you would. 
uh, ideals. It's actually changed a little bit okay. this week. It is my responsibility to bring out the good in people as best as I am capable. <laughs> because he truly 100% believed that sticking his neck out for white would see the errors of his ways, as has happened previously time and time again. And he is so utterly crestfallen that White still ran away after all of this, and that White is probably now dead, that Adrix is just like, hey man, what could I do? I, I did I, what I could. Do any of you kind of just wish you had eaten White? I mean, no. Uh, <laughs> Birdie a little bit. He's never had orc. <laughs> What else you got for me? Uh, aspect signature style uh, energetic for exhausting himself hunting for the appropriate meat to barter uh, White's uh, life with. So what I did there is I just, while you guys were hunting, I just went on the random encounter table and ignored anything <laughs> that wasn't game and just happened <laughs> to roll bears. So, okay. I figured that's and able I was friends not particularly all right and adrix.livejournal.com oh i have not read that yet i will do that in a moment who else wants to get some blips i'll go wendy all right i've got good is working for the benefit of something other than yourself mm -hmm. for my arguments ensuring the freedom of white um i've got learning new things is never wasted for when we were talking to the party and arguing we should take the time to determine how exactly the sled works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Monastic tradition redirection. Uh, use the forces that already exist for to create your desired outcome for somewhat precisely the size of an explosion created by a Remoros. <laughs> okay. And wait, how does that work for getting shot by lightning determining exactly how the lightning tower works? I think you're going to be woefully disappointed when you find out how the lightning tower actually works. It's not that impressive. <laughs> All right, who's next? Birdie, I'll I go. got it. Birdie, I heard uh, you first. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, my ideal, the accumulation of magical knowledge, is something that help, makes me most useful for my tribe for the uh, recommendation of using the Fabricate Scroll to make a safe egress across the Death Ravine. Like, air quotes safe? I mean, like, safer than, I don't know, jumping. Who's gonna do that? <laughs> I wonder. I'm really dubious about this jump plan. What honestly. else we got? Uh, I think my, we're thinking uh, it. My alignment, uh, neutral, willing to help out, but want something in return for my vote of just leaving the rumors where they were because they weren't bothering us nobody had asked us to take take care of this problem and we weren't sticking around long enough for it to be our problem anyway to be fair the rumors literally actually did bother you <laughs> yeah but they got like, loose and attacked you at the place where you were we took care of those but the other rumors we're talking to the second group of rumors okay like yeah anyway <laughs> uh and then the video that's it Okay. Pretty and bad. Red? Or, bad. I'm sorry, Razu. Uh, Razu only has three this week. Okay. Uh, her alignment, uh, good and evil are subjective distinctions, so what matters is keeping to your own ethics. Razu made it very clear that what Adrix was doing was taking White as a slave. <laughs> like, he was bartering for the life of somebody. Uh, hey, Adrix is a ideal. terrible slaver. Yeah. He's just not very good he, at it at all. He did his heart's just not in it. Uh Rod, Rod's ideals work hard, play harder. I earn my leisure time and buy Osprey might use it to my fullest for making sure she got some of that sweet dank Remoraz Kush. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you just say dank Remoraz Kush? Yes, I did. I okay. I think we do need to have you're, a very special episode. <laughs> you're welcome for that for that episode title, by the way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Rosie's we'll bond, a sword harm is only the beginning of a greater world, but it is a necessary first step for insisting that we deal with this Remoraz problem under the Frost, Frost Giants Hall. Okay. And that's all I got. And red. Might be muted. Alright, I've got uh, Ideal. Cold hard logic will not suffer to argue with those who are motivated by something as fleeting as emotion for his argument that 
you know, I could just get you guys more meat by sending Adrix out to hunt, then you'll get off white. Okay. And I've got alignment, neutral goods, survival requires the greatest good for the greatest number, or wanting to seal off the Remzeraz Remora cave. I thought you were mispronouncing that on purpose as a joke. He was. He, this is our new mispronunciation. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And yeah, he's going to change it every week. <laughs> We're going to have Remora every week? That's it. Uh, we got level 14 is the highest, correct? Nobody's ding 15 uh, yet? No, I am. I Until the end of this session. Level 14 baby. last week. So this blips this week are worth 833. We give one blip for the most creative solution to a problem this session. That was Bertie for coming up with the idea of doing the fabricate bridge. Who furthered the party's goals the most? Razu for arguing to. Do something about the Rimuraz, despite my protestations. <laughs> Who was the badass this week? Uh, Wendy, Wendy. For, because cool birds don't look at explosions. <laughs> and intangibles. I was going to give that to Red, but I had lost it, so we'll have to think about that for a moment. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I'm good for giving it to Red just because, I mean, he... He was absolutely right, where, like, listen, this is completely pointless. We can just go get some meat. You want some meat? We got some meat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> giving it to Red for the meat solution? Oh, God. Yeah. And only if you promise to never say the meat solution again. Yeah, don't <laughs> ever phrase it like that, please. I could not make please. that promise. It's now my favorite please. phrase. And please don't. No. No. Red takes don't our scruffle. Also, oh. presumably, for the meat solution. <laughs> solution is in dissolving it, or solution is in... Either way, is no, disgusting. No. I'm awarding everybody one blip for the awesome avalanche scene and bring most of this Remoraz problem to a hold. Uh, honestly, my, so, the intent was just to just have a very short scene at the long haul, like, a kind of fake-out fight, like you're not actually fighting the Frost Giant. And then you guys ran with it. But I was going to put Remoraz on the random encounter table for the rest of your time in this region. And now I'm not mm. going to do that because... Because <laughs> we solved that problem. Right. We fixed it. So we fixed it. Fixed. It's, un it's, it's unrelated now, but I remembered what I wanted to give it to Red for. The intangible. The Too late. Coin thing. <laughs> Alright, so blips are worth 833. Razu, one, two, three, four, five. Wendy has six. So he's blipped. Adrix has five. Birdie has five. And Red has five. I'm also going to award some blips for the Remorize you killed. Everybody can have 1,440 experience for that combat. Oh, wow. And there will be considerably more than that next time. Yeah, Remorazes are pretty <laughs> high up there in CR. They're worth quite a bit. How much are Blips worth again? 833. Okay. And when we come back next Sunday, we will be going into Voronok Keep. And this is the final dungeon that I have prepped for this campaign. So we are on into the end game now. I'm going to be hosting SGDQ all week, but I'm also probably dragging people off to keep talking and nobody explodes during, like, really boring runs, like when they play Fire Emblem or whatever. So thank you guys all for playing. Glad to have you yet again, and I'll see you.